Hey guys, we all see the birds flying in the sky every day and most of the people even desire to fly like them. Not with the help of modern devices, but naturally growing those wings just like birds. But is it possible? The desire to fly like a bird is not something new that we as modern people experience. Even in the ancient period, these desires were often shown in the form of demigods or other mythical creatures who can fly with the help of wings, like Alkonost from Russian mythology. The Alkonost is a woman-headed bird. It makes amazingly beautiful sounds and those who hear these sounds forget everything they know and want nothing more ever again. Quite interesting, right? We call it the Neuralizer. Keep it simple, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Agent K. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. Angels in Abrahamic religions often have wings and described as generous. RK in Greek mythology, she is the twin sister of Iris. While Iris has golden wings, she has iridescent wings. So these are the few gods or goddesses who were depicted as having wings. In my view, these are just the reflection of people's imagination and desire being written and made into a part of their lives. And also the modern depictions like Leonardo da Vinci's Ornithopter. and the superhero Angel from the X-Men series. But first, let's tackle the question of why don't humans already have wings? To answer this, we have to compare our anatomy with that of a bird. To be more precise, let's see our hand with that of a bat as it is a flying mammal. This shows the bone structure in a bat's wing, a bird's wing and a human arm. The bird's wing has a fairly rigid bone structure and the main flying muscles move the bones at the point where the wing connects to the body. A bat has much more flexible wing structure. It is very much like a human arm and hand, except it has a thin membrane of skin called the patagium extending between the hand and the body and between each finger bone. Bats can move the wing like hand, essentially swimming through the air. The thumb extends out of the wing as a small claw which bats use to climb up the trees and other structures. This helps them reach a high launching point for flight takeoff. First thing to do when you have to fly is you must lift yourselves up into the air from the ground. That is what every bird does. But for birds, it's super easy because they are not heavy at all. An average eagle weighs about 3 to 7 kilos when the average weight of an adult human is 70 to 80 kilos. But it's not entirely about the weight which is stopping us from flying because we have evidence that the largest pterosaur called Quetzalcoatlus, which had a wingspan of 22 feet. Just imagine how big that would be and it weighed about 250 kilos but was able to fly. So what is exactly the reason for the absence of wings in humans? Well, birds, at least the big ones that fly, have rather hollow bones. Mammals have these hollows in their bones too, but not to the dramatic extent as birds. Birds bone has a density of about 0.3 grams per cubic centimeter whereas a human has 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Bones are mostly air filled. This makes the bones of large flying birds extremely light. Another reason why even big birds can fly easily than a human is that they have very large pectoral muscles which powers their wings. Pectoral muscles are present in the chest. If you think you've got enough muscle to flap the wings, try doing a push up and generating enough force to lift your body off the ground and imagine doing that repeatedly. In order to leave the ground, the force is driving a body upward must overcome the downward force of the body's weight. You can see this in an action during a jump. When you push your feet down into the ground, earth provides an equal and opposite reaction, forcing the body upward. So flying creatures and machines have to push the air down instead of pushing on the ground itself. One. There are two ways to manage the problem of pushing down enough air to achieve a liftoff. You can accelerate a small amount of air downward very quickly as a hummingbird does.
that takes incredible power and none of the muscles in the human body can even come close to accelerating air that quickly. So because of humans are at least three times heavier than a flying animal should be, maybe the ability for humans to fly will only be possible when we have bionic muscles of super strength that are lighter and stronger than our biological ones. Last year, a team of students at the University of Toronto built a machine loosely based on Leonardo da Vinci's ornithopter sketches. The bicycle-powered wing-flapping contraption couldn't achieve liftoff, but it could maintain its altitude for 19 seconds once towed into an airborne position. But don't kill your hopes right away. An MIT biologist Dr. Sarah Thornton said that growing wings on an adult human is quite impossible but it's theoretically possible to a human who is not born yet. All it takes for scientists to find the genes for wings in one animal, say a bird or a bat, and swap them in the right spot in human's DNA. But that's only theoretical. We don't know yet enough about, about the DNA of the birds or bats to know which genes are actually responsible for sprouting wings in birds. But we could, someday. There's another problem too, ethics. Most things in science require consent, where the person participating in the science knows the risks and gives permission for the experiment to continue. You can't ask someone if they want wings before they're even born. So some might say it's not fair to give a human embryo the genes for wings. So as of now, humans can't grow wings to fly. But we are not far from the future where humans would naturally fly to their destinations. Until then, Let's keep hoping we will fly and as always, thanks for watching.